Hello, my name is Ilwan Zhang from Bukyang National University. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, this title in this conference, Digital Mitigation Technology for Smart Infrastructure, DMTSI uh, 2020. The title name title is the effects of granulated core bottom mesh and oyster share on the improvement of coastal sediment in different water temperature. So this is uh, this abstract, and I mean that this title talking about the, how the in situ capping material handled the contamin contaminated coastal sediment in the different uh, water temperature because the, in the different water temperature uh, produce provide uh, different uh, decomposition rate of organic matter. So, for example, in the low low temperature low, low water temperature. The organic matter decomposed very slowly. However, in high, in the higher water temperature, the decomposition rate of organic matter is accelerated. So this, and also the in situ capping material, uh, is the is changed the, you know, according to the different water temperature. I expected that in high water temperature, uh, they accelerated. They accelerate. Uh, the illusion of uh, something good, good contents or good chemical compound from the in situ capping material. So in here, I I try to investigate how water temperature the change uh, impacted impacts on the in situ capping materials uh, in in situ capping materials ability. So the first in the introduction, I so I show some research background. The coastal environment is, as you know, the very very important in the Earth's ecosystems. Actually, oceans are set cover oceans cover 71% of the surface of Earth. However, in the 7% 7 of 71% of ocean was is the coastal areas. However, in this coastal area, it's very, very small compared to the oceans. However, it has the most complicated ecosystem in the world, in the Earth. And also 28% of the total global primary production occurs in the, this area. So this is, has a lot of a wide sea, coastal sea with bad and a lot of nutrients. So it is a good area for spawning ground and habitats for the flora and the fauna. And also the and also seaweed in here they accumulate a lot of carbon carbon so they have a ability to sequester the carbon in the earth. So the U.S. Uh, U.S. paper uh, estimated that uh, it's a finance it's it's a economic cost is around is about the seventy. Per trillion. That is the value of a coastal ecosystem. However, this this coastal area is very contaminated nowadays because the acceleration of pollution in the this area. But uh, first, most of aquaculture is, is placed in this coastal area, and more than 60% of main cities in the world, and more than 40% of world population also. Uh, lived in placed and lived in this coastal area. So this uh, this environment uh, generates non-point pollutant sources. Amount of non-point pollutant sources uh, becoming uh, introduced to the coastal areas through the flood or rain in the rainy season or storm. So and. And the other way, this charge of untreated wastewater accelerates this contamination of a coastal area. And finally, accessible development in coastal zone is the one of the anthropogenic uh, cause, causes from in the coastal area contamination. So what is the negative impact of a contaminated coastal sediment? I show some poor pictures of contaminated coastal sediment. This is a contaminated coastal sediment, and this is also very, very dark dark coastal sediment and this is also scum. What is the scum? Scum is uh, generated from the coastal basic sediment, I mean the bottom sediment. So usually contaminated coastal sediment generate uh, hydrogen sulfide and this hydrogen sulfide is uh, most of uh, hydrogen sulfide is gas. So it means that gas, generated gas uh, pushed the uh, low density 
sediment into the surface water. That's why this uh, aggregate of uh, low density uh, contaminated coastal sediment is uh, blow wave on the, on the surface of uh, water. So what happened in, in the basic environment? First, low oxygen concentration will be measured because uh, usually through the decomposition rate, decomposition process, they consume uh, oxygen in the basic environment. So it means they consume oxygen, makes the resulting make uh, make a devastation of the basic environment because there is a low oxygen. So they it means the ecosystem the consisted with the with the macro flora, macro fauna, they cannot be, they cannot live in this is contaminated coastal areas. So that's why devastation of ecosystem happen in this area. And second, the resource pension problem. So usually storm and waves and typhoons or rainy season or out of wave kind of external forces they generate the erosion in the contaminated erosion on the surface uh, on the surface sediment. So what happened after erosion? The resource pensions occurs uh, through the water, through the overlying water, and the uh, and the intersection with the sediment and the overlying water. So the release of the contaminants from the sediment uh, diffuse the overlying water, and the contaminants will be uh, spread out all over the coastal areas. So it means the aquaculture maybe near the aquacultures, they the fishery mortality rate will be increased because the, the contaminants, contaminants is invaded their, eco, their systems. That's why the second environment problem will be, uh, in, will be measured from the negative effects of the contaminated sediment. So conventionally, to improve this contaminated coastal sediment, most government and most, most researchers suggest that the, Dredging and the in situ capping is a conventional method for improve the continuous coastal sediment. However, there is a wide difference. It's first coverage area. In the dredging, they can only they can focus only the narrow area kind of harbor because this they use the heavy machines kind of excavator or the amount of ships and they need uh, oil and they need manpower that's, that costs a lot of money. However, in situ capping material, they can cover wide area near the bridge and the construction site where, where dredging cannot uh, remove the coastal, contaminated coastal sediment. And second, the treatment of the time. Yeah, dredging is the very, very high Advanced advantage because they can remove the, they can remove contaminated coastal sediment very very fast compared to in situ capping material, because the in situ capping material as you know they can, they just uh, scatter the in situ capping material on the contaminated sediment. So that is uh, so it takes a long time to activate the in situ capping material to improve to remediate contaminated coastal sediment. And also, the other way there is uh, the second pollution. We have to consider the second pollution because dredging, it is good to remove the contaminated coastal sediment directly in the short time. However, it makes uh, erode, erosion, and uh, it releases a lot of contaminants to the water body. However, in the capping method, there is uh, no second pollution. And also, when we consider post-treatment, dredging required a wide area to put the dredged sediment. However, in such capping where they don't need post-treatment, they just monitoring the, the area of the scattered in situ capping material. So in here, the red, the red colors uh, alphabet suggests the cost of dredging and in situ capping method. As you can see, the in dredging uh, cost of dredging is uh, three times or three times higher than the in situ capping material. So nowadays, the government, uh, most of the government uh, near the ocean air, coastal area, they they prefer the in situ capping compared to dredging. 
So there are a lot of uh, in situ capping material in nature. So sand, activated carbon, oyster shell, red mud, steel slag, they can separate the natural basis, uh, basis, basis capping material. Sand gravel nature and the sand synthesis material capping material is uh, organic clays, geolite, gel, hydrolysis, aluminum oxide, or the other way in situ capping material. Uh, the other way in situ capping material uh, can be from the Industrial byproduct, kind of oyster shell, red mud, steel slate, granite coal ash. This is CM uh, capping material, their basic ability is isolated contaminated sediment to, to, from the overlying water. However, natural CM cannot uh, is not the reactive material. Only chemical synthesis CM or industrial byproduct CM could be the reactive material. And also, this reactiveness based on reactiveness, effectiveness also concluded because the porous on calcium or kind of ions can be reactive react, can be reactiveness uh, material compared to the natural based CM. And also cost is different. Uh, chemical sense CM is the most uh, generally higher compared to the natural based CM and the industrial byproduct CM. And the most low cost is the definitely industrial byproduct CM. So industrial byproduct CM, there is uh, two types. Uh, first, granite core ash. This is the most uh, populated uh, CM maybe in Japan because it is actively researched the capping material for decays and it has high calcium and also through the a lot of papers, they improve the permeability and the remove the nutrients, remo nutrients in the coastal sediment and uh, increase the core organic matter decomposition rate. However, it is also to have uh, this advantage because the, they use the cement and it makes uh, the cost uh, becoming higher. And also because the cement, uh, some of the NGO are worried about that uh, heavy metal illusion. So in nowadays, in 2022, uh, I suggest that the current core bottom ash and oyster shells mixtures because the core bottom ash has a silica contents and oyster shell has also calcium contents. So I expected that this mixture can be a cement pojolani reaction and make a, could be a cement material uh, without the real cement. And also, it, they, the first material has uh, been proved to be effective to remove the nutrients in the coastal, contaminated coastal sediment. So in, in this tight in here, I, this is my purpose to evaluate the remediation effects of GBO in different water temperature, because the even though GBO is the very very effective to contaminate the coastal sediment, it's. Uh, Ability is depends on the water temperature, maybe. So I expect the summer season will be better and the winter season will be decreased. The, this decreased the, of the GBO's uh, remediation ability. So this is the material. I granulated the core bottom mesh also share with a range of 1 to 25, uh, 25 millimeter uh, size. And the contaminated coastal sediment and seawater was taken from the Tongyang Harbor. Uh, this table shows uh, this contaminated co coastal sediment and the seawater property. As you can see, the pH is lower than 8. Uh, usually, 8.3 is the seawater's normal pH. So it means the seawater was the, is the acidified, and also coastal sediment is acidified by the organic matter decompositions. And also, low soil ignition suggests that the coastal sediment contamination intensity, because usually under the three is the normal coastal sediment. How they, however, in here, it, it shows the uh, 12, 12 percent of coastal sediment through low soil ignition. So, so it means that uh, this contaminated sediment, this sediment. Uh, is highly contaminated, contaminated compared to the uh, coastal, normal coastal sediment. So this, uh, I met, uh, mess, in the method, I prepared 30 container of the control and experimental cases. So 10, so this is control and this is GBO with the uh, sediment. 
So 10 cases uh, from the control and expand cases were stored in the 15 degrees Celsius degree, 20 and 25 degrees Celsius, Celsius degree. So I analyze this, this containers every 15, 30, 45, 60, 19 days, and I measure the pH, TIN, phosphate in overlying water in here, in here, and the sediment in here, in here. So and this is a result and discussion. The first I showed the change of pH in overlying water and the sediment. As you can see, the control has uh, kept lower compared to the uh, expander cases. However, as you can see, in the higher water temperature, the pH control cases uh, was decreased due to the organometer decomposition because the organometric low organometric decomposition means that they did not generate the amount of acid. That's why the C50 was higher than the C25 pH. Meanwhile, pH in experimental cases is increased because the calcium from the GBO was hydro hydrolyzed by the in the overall water. <clears throat> so that's why in high water so that's why in high water temperature the calcium illusion is uh, pro was promoted that's pushed the increase of pH especially in the G25. Also this uh, phenomenon of pH changes in the overall water it happens in similarly in the sediment also. As you can see, C15 was uh, higher than the C25 in the sediment. Also, G25 was uh, higher uh, compared to G15-5 in pH. Uh, this is uh, phosphate changes. As you can see, uh, high water temperature uh, generate uh, accelerate the calcium illusion from the GBO. So in here, the C15 and the C20, C25 was higher compared to the higher has the high had a high phosphate uh, concentration compared to the experimental cases because the through the organic decomposition the, the phosphate was released to the uh, overland water from the sediment. However, in G55, G20, and G25, the most of experiment, the all of experimental cases, cases uh, phosphate concentration was lower, the lower significantly compared to the control cases. However, sediment, also sediment is uh, show the same, almost the same pattern. Although there is, there were a lot of fluctuation uh, during the 15 during the 55 days after then, it becomes the uh, similar pattern, similar pattern to overall water. As you can see, experimental cases has lower phosphate concentration. Meanwhile, control cases has uh, had a higher phosphate concentration. So in this graph, it shows the shows the DIN changes. The upper side uh, shows the control cases and the lower side uh, shows the experimental cases. And the left panel is shows overlying water. And the right panel is shows the sediment layer. As you can see in the control overlying water, in the high water temperature, DI also increased. Meanwhile, in sediment, the high water temperature, it also increased. Uh, increased with the high, or high water temperature, after 45 days it decreased because the uh, generated uh, DIN uh, released the overland water. That's why the overland water's DIN increased uh, according to the time. However, overland water in the experimental cases it shows also it also shows a similar pattern compared to the overland water in control cases. However, it's just more than significant changes compared to the control cases because the, after 15 five days, after 50 days, the DIN increased significantly in the G25 because the 
and also it is the same in the sediment experiment cases and its intensity of DIN was higher than the control cases because the eroded calcium from GBO uh, or promoted organic matter decomposition. That's why the organic water of experimental cases was definitely higher compared to the cultural cases. So this is my conclusion. So under the different water temperature, microcosm experiment was conducted to evaluate GBO's uh, remediation impacts on contaminated coastal sediment. Although high water temperature promoted the decomposition rate of organic matter in the sediment, it also promoted the illusion of calcium from GBO. The remediation effects of GBO on sediment were improved in the higher water temperature. This phenomenon indicates that high water temperature will maximize the remediation ability of GBO. Consequently, optimal season for applying GBO on the contaminated coastal sediment will be in summer. Thank you for your attention.